American movies and TV have made major strides in LGBTQ representation of late, but storytellers abroad have always been ahead of the curve, exploring sexuality and relationships with groundbreaking technique and in ways often coded and ahead of their time. Foreign filmmakers are often the ones to push the envelope when it comes to queer film, and they bring their liberated sensibility when they make movies on American soil. Here's a sampling of some of the best international LGBTQ cinema out there, including alternative entries from popular filmmakers you may have missed. And then we danced. In Swedish filmmaker Levon Akin's intimate tour de force, a young man comes to terms with his sexuality amid the hypermasculine world of traditional Georgian dance. Framing his gentle coming-of-age tale around such a traditional piece of Georgian culture, Akin has made an inherently political film rendered in sensitive terms with a celebratory spirit. With distinctive features and a lithe physicality, lead actor Levon Jelbakiani toggles effortlessly between childlike innocence, explosive anger, and wisdom beyond his years. His riveting performance is indisputably the heart and spine of the film. Because of the sensitive subject matter, Akin and his team had to use guerrilla filmmaking tactics to shoot in the conservative country, giving the film a gorgeous cinema verite quality. The film has stoked protests in Tbilisi, where it was shot, proving that queer filmmaking is still a political act. Bad Education Bad Education is a haunted hall of mirrors explicit, deeply troubling, and unbearably sexy. If you're not chafing over Gail Garcia Bernal in either of his dual roles, you don't have a pulse. Almodovar never shies from playing with story structure, and here deploys the meta-narrative technique to create a poison-darted valentine to the movies and to desire itself. Beau travail. Dennis Levant is a monolith of repression who self-destructs in Claire Dennis' loose adaptation of Herman Melville's novella Billy Budd. He plays a French Foreign Legion officer reminiscing about his time in Africa, uprooted by the arrival of an alluring recruit, Gregoire Collin, sowing jealousy and desire. A recent Janus Films restoration of this 1999 classic helps Agnes Goddard's sensuous cinematography pop, especially in the iconic last scene, a solo dance performed by Lovant to Corona's 90s club favorite A Rhythm of the Night. Benedetta, Dutch provocateur Paul Verhoeven strikes again, this time with a movie that lands somewhere on that vast Verhoeven spectrum between Gell and a showgirls. Based on a true story of a Renaissance-era nun and mystic, Benedetta inspired religious protesters to declare it the de blasphemous lesbian nun movie go further cementing its must-see status. Both an erotic satire and a scathing critique of Catholicism and patriarchy, Benedetta is a political farce with a heaping dose of sex appeal. Discovered by the historian Judith C. Brown in the mid-1980s, Benedetta Carlini was a 17th-century mystic who had visions of Christ, claiming he wanted to marry her and even received the stigmata. She was eventually stripped of her rank and imprisoned due to her sexual relationship with fellow novice sister Bartolemia. Beats Per Minute Director Robin Campillo and co-writer Philippe Mangiat mined their experiences on the front lines of AIDS activism group ACT UP in 1990s Paris in this gutting look into how the epidemic affected a group of friends, protesters, and lovers. Winner of the Can Grand Prix in 2017, BPM issues Agitprop by grounding its narrative in the relationships between the characters, including HIV-positive Sean and negative Nathan. A tender, private vigil the two share as Sean succumbs to the disease is one of the great send-offs in movies. The Duke of Burgundy Peter Strickland's stylish, BDSM skewing The Duke of Burgundy as stars sits Babbitt Knudsen and Chiara Diana in a complex jockeying for psychosexual power. It's a tender love story trapped in an arthouse horror movie, an elegant study of the psychological and physical debasement that accompanies desire, as the relationship between a middle-aged butterfly expert Cynthia and her serval companion Evelyn goes to compulsively watchable extremes. End of the century What place does romance have in the age of online dating and casual hookup culture? The next one-night stand could be the love of your life, or you could never see them again. When you can order the next pretty thing to your door, is it possible to make a real connection? In Argentinian filmmaker Lucio Castro's stunning feature filmmaking debut, end of the century, two men meet cute from a balcony and soon discover a mysterious familiarity. A Fantastic Woman Sebastián Lilio's 2017 A Fantastic Woman put the Chilean filmmaker on the map when it won the Academy Award for what was then known as Best Foreign Language Film. Starring Daniela Vega, it's also a radical story about a transgender woman named Marina who bravely stands up to overbearing scrutiny from her recently dead partner's surviving family members who insist they don't owe her anything. 
A fantastic woman proved instrumental in Chile in lifting entrenched discrimination against trans people and has also made Vega one of the most influential trans women in the world. Fire The first entry in Deepa Mehta's E Elements trilogy, to be followed by a earth and a water, broke ground and ignited protest in 1998 for being one of the few Bollywood movies to depict a queer relationship. The film centers on two Indian sisters-in-law, Sita and Radha, who are chained in loveless, arranged marriages and in turn fall for each other. Fire hugely challenged middle-class, conservative society in the place that, for many audiences, it hit the most home. Andrew Hay's breakout feature takes a tried and true romantic trope, the unexpected romance, writ over the course of a limited period of time, and turns it into one of the genre's most stirring examples of the power of love in its most literally immediate forms. Centered on the shiftless Russell and the alluring Glenn, what first functions as a spur-of-the-moment one-night stand soon blossoms into a full-blown love affair. Taking place over the course of that eponymous weekend, Hay and his stars cram the full force of a life-changing romance into just a few short days, and a weekend manages the near-impossible, charting a full relationship in the minimum of time. The Handmaiden Park Chanwook's twisty and very erotic thriller transports a Victorian Gothic aesthetic to Japanese-occupied Korea in adapting Welsh author Sarah Waters' novel Fingersmith. Explicit but never exploitative, The Handmaiden tangles a thief, an heiress, and a con man who are all one-upping each other amid a web of psychosexual mind games, with Kim tae and Kim Min-hee balancing the film's constant teetering between revenge tale and love story. Summer of 85 sizzles with the hot heat of first love set against the banks of a seaside resort in Normandy. It's also got a killer soundtrack including The Cure and Bananarama, pop-colored cinematography, enough Breton shirts to outfit a French New Wave movie, and a cast of Easy on the Eyes French cinema favorites. Summer of 85-inch channels the talkie, beach-set films of Eric Romer but with a rebellious edge, hinging on the stolen hours love affair between introverted teen Alex and the slightly older but hardly wiser David, the square-jawed Adonis who cuts a raffish figure on a motorcycle. The highs and lows of their summer fling collide in a sudden and mysterious tragedy foreground in the movie's opening scenes, which makes the pair's evolving connection, ignited by the actor's volcanic chemistry, all the more suspenseful. Adapting Aidan Chambers' 1982 novel, Dance on My Grave, Ozon captures the intoxicating pull of first love and the loss of control that can make a formative erotic bond so dangerous and addictive. The evocative filmmaking is matched by the charms of its leads, who, in case you needed another selling point, enact one of the hottest Guyangai kisses ever thrown on screen. Alice Jr. Exuding charm, infectious energy, and unshakable confidence, Alice is the teenage trans girl protagonist of your movie dreams. She's a runner-up in a reality competition show for young models, which she never lets her adoring public forget via her bubbly YouTube updates. She's living her best life in a chic Brazilian city when her father unexpectedly moves her to the more conservative countryside. As Alice contends with boys' school uniforms and ignorant bullying, she also opens herself up to new forms of friendship. First-time feature director Gil Baroni makes a grand entrance with this flirty, heartfelt, and celebratory trans comedy. More trans films like this one, please. God's Own Country Set in the rural Yorkshire countryside, O'Connor plays a repressed loner who falls for Romanian migrant worker Gheorghe, who is hired to his family farm for lambing season. Their connection burnishes slowly against a stunning verite backdrop of grueling farm life, including the boys getting their hands dirty with the lamb births. Aching with desire and tough work, they consummate their love with a lot more finesse and experience than the Americans in Brokeback Mountain. What's more, the ambiguous ending may not be the stuff of fairy tales, but it's far from tragic. The Wound, John Trengov's bracing South African psychological drama from 2017 made the shortlist for the Best Foreign Language Film Oscar at the 90th Academy Awards. The Wound A opens a rare window into Owoluko, an ancient initiation into manhood practiced throughout South Africa, that's complicated by the closeted tensions between three men whose secret relationships turn explosive. Considered a milestone in the country's cinema, the Wound traces how lust boils over in a taboo climate. Water Lilies Everyone knows a portrait of a lady on fire, but Celine Siama's assured screenwriting and directing debut from 2007, Water Lilies, established her reputation for intimate portraits of female relationships and sexuality. The title in French means Birth of the Octopuses, an evocative name for a tale set during a torrid summer in France where young Marie, Paulina Quart, yearns to get close to the rebel of the swim team, Florian, played by a portrait of a lady on fire, Gstara Del Henel. 
Viva, Patty Brethnock's Spanish-language drama was Ireland's entry for the Best Foreign Language Film Oscar at the 88th Academy Awards. It made the shortlist, but pity it didn't go all the way because this inspiring movie provides needed representation for young gay people struggling to come out. Set in Cuba, the film centers on Jesus, a young gay hairdresser whose aspirations of becoming a drag performer are appended by the return of his conservative and not to mention estranged father. Tropical Malady, like several Apichat Pong whereas Sefakul films, Tropical Malady is split into two halves that don't immediately quite resemble one another until they do. In the first, Kung is a soldier stationed in rural Thailand during a mysterious killing spree of cows who meets and falls for Tong. They embark on a bucolic romance far removed from a society that prohibits their love affair. In the second, Kang's character is reinvented as another soldier who loses his way in the woods and becomes beguiled by the spirit of a tiger shaman, played by Kai Bwadi. The movie becomes two different ways of looking at the same relationship. It's a maddening, luxuriously beautiful classic. Nagisa Oshima shocked the international art house scene with the sexually brazen, in the realm of the senses in 1976, but revisited the dangerous world of sexual politics more than 20 years later in 1999's A Taboo. Set during the final years of the Edo period in Japan, Taboo centers on an androgynous-looking samurai, played by Ryuhi Matsuda, whom his commander suspects to be gay. As cruel and hypnotic as any Oshima film, Taboo was also his last movie, ending his career on a mysterious final note. Alain Garotti's sexy and scary A Stranger by the Lake has earned criticisms for conflating homosexuality with criminality, but it's hard not to be drawn into the world of a nude beach that serves as a regular cruising spot for lonely gay men. Frank ignores all warning signs telling him not to fall for Michelle, a handsome, Burt Reynolds meets Tom of Finland type, especially after Frank witnesses a murder by drowning in the lake. Lust can be a dangerous, terrible thing. Rafiki, the film that made waves when it was banned in its home country despite a can debut, this tender queer romance pulses with bite colors and the electric butterflies of young love. Boasting nuanced performances from two newcomers, Wanyuri Kahia's assured debut feature is an important reminder of the struggle many still face to live out and proud. Rainer Werner Fassbinder's final howl of anguish from the soul was 1982's Ikarel, his last and possibly gayest movie. It's an adaptation of a novel by French libertine and gay icon Jean Genet, settling into a French port city where a madam played by Jean Moreau runs the world, and sailors engage in explicit sex acts that turn violent. Brad Davis, who would die from HIV-related complications three years later, is perfectly cast as the title character, a criminal in love who, much like Janet and Fassbinder, seals his own tragic fate. O Fantasma Joao Pedro Rodriguez's bleak and unsparing erotic drama from 2000 warps into a disturbing nocturnal landscape home to dark and depraved sexuality. Ricardo Menzies plays Sergio, a trash collector by day who cruises the streets at night in a black rubber suit, leading him down increasingly dark paths. This hopeless and even sadistic movie was labeled as too detached at the time, but it's a fascinating look into the underbelly of human sexuality with an atmospherically creepy tone. There is no more delicious agony than the one felt when you're sitting millimeters from your crush, wondering who's going to make the first move or if someone will at all. That unbearable, painful erotic tension is more or less the sustained mood of Oliver Hermanus' shimmering and sensual military drama Amafi, which is easily the best movie about gay male repression since God's Own Country. Set in 1981 South Africa at the apex of the South African border war, the film's story of gay unrequited desire turns out to be a casing for something far more lethal in its marrow. Manji. The Japanese novel A Quicksand by Junichiro Tanizaki has been adapted four times, beginning with this 1964 version directed by Yasuzo Masamura. Sex, lies, adultery, obsession, and betrayal collide in this stylish melodrama about a bored, childless housewife who falls for a beautiful model, sparking an intense relationship with perilous consequences. Did you enjoy this video? Please let us know in the comments. Check out our other videos. And for more new content like this, subscribe to Pride Reviews.